If you're new to VR and to the Pico 4, this video will help you set up and get the most from your new headset. The first thing you'll need to do out of the box is remove all of the protective labels. This front panel looks really impressive when you first get it out of the box, but it doesn't stay clean for very long. It shows up every mark and it's crazy that there's no lens cloth included, so it's essential that you buy a lens cloth to keep your headset clean. And most importantly, keep the lenses and the cameras clean. These lenses are huge and really fragile and a dirty lens will affect the clarity of your image. You can buy a lens protector for when you're not using the headset and they're really cheap. Also, don't put your headset in direct sunlight as the lens can magnify the sun and damage your headset. The headset has five cameras and you have four cameras around here that help track your movement and a fifth camera in the middle here which is your color see-through camera which we will look at in a minute. This is a light guard to prevent light coming in around the nose area and to attach it gently pull off the face guard, hold the face guard with the plastic facing you and the nose guard with the flat piece facing towards you like this. The nose flap now sits behind this little piece of plastic and pushes into place. Now you can replace the facial interface making sure that this metal piece on the strap is hooked in place behind the interface here. If you wear glasses and you find that the headset is too close to your face you can add the included glasses spacer. So remove the facial interface as shown before and then insert the plastic spacer here in between the headset and the interface and now replace the interface on top as before. And to remove the spacer, you simply push it with your finger in the nose slot here to pick it off and this is the easiest way. Before you use your hand straps, remove the battery tabs here and this will activate the batteries so you can use your hand controllers. These are your hand lanyards and you'll want to put them on straight away. I've lost count of the number of times that the hand straps have saved my controllers, the number of times I've gone to put them down on a virtual table. The hand controllers are also good for those games where you're throwing your hands and throwing your arms around just to make sure that your controller stays in your hand and you don't throw it across the room. So grab a lanyard and a controller and then thread the lanyard through itself around the base of the controller and do the same for each one, it's that simple. The design of these controllers has been done in such a way that it's hard to get them the wrong way around. But just so you know, the grip button which is on the side of the controller always faces the inside. This here is the controller tracking ring, so make sure that this doesn't get covered in any way. The controllers come with two batteries pre-installed which should last probably for weeks at a time. But to replace them, you pull down on the catch here and then the battery compartment will spring open. To charge the headset, use the included cable and charge plug. Plug the cable into the plug and then plug the other end into the USB-C socket on the headset. Wait for the LED light to go green and then your headset is fully charged. Once your headset's charged, turn it on by holding the power button in for two seconds. The controllers themselves should turn on automatically as soon as you pull out the battery tabs. But if they don't, then press the home button on the right hand controller for one second and this will activate them. To put the headset on, loosen the dial anti-clockwise. Undo the Velcro strap on top and loosen off to allow enough room for your head. Place the headset over your eyes and then pull the strap over your head. Tighten the dial and then adjust the Velcro strap on top. The headset needs to be tight enough that it's secure, but not too tight that it's uncomfortable. When you first put your headset on, there are some basic settings that you need to run through. So make sure you do this in a seated position. At this stage, your safety boundary won't be set and this is what protects you from smashing up your surroundings. And also this front camera on the front of your headset it allows you to see your surroundings but only in 2D and that's a bit strange at first. And it did actually make me feel a bit dizzy at first experiencing my surroundings in color but in flat 2D. So sit down if it's your first VR experience. After turning the headset on, you're walked through setting up the headset with your country and language and the Wi-Fi settings. You need to put in an email and you get sent a verification code to sign up. You can then adjust the lenses and your IPD, which is your interpupillary distance, and this is the distance between your eyes. You adjust this by clicking on the plus or the minus button until the image becomes clear and the lenses will automatically adjust. At first, it looks like you can go up to 72, but only as low as 62 millimeters. 
but if you carry on clicking on 62 millimeters, it will allow you to go further down to a distance of 58 millimeters. At 58 millimeters, the lenses may push on your nose, which is why you have to select this box to say that you accept the wrist before you adjust to that distance. For some reason, when I went through this setup, my lenses stopped adjusting and I couldn't make any further adjustments. If this happens to you, don't worry because you can adjust your IPD settings later in the settings menu. Once everything is set up, the first thing that happens when you turn your headset on is that you set the boundary for your play space to stop you hitting things. You can select from a default boundary or a custom boundary. The default boundary puts a huge circle around you and this is where you can choose to play from a seated position as well. The custom boundary is where you use the controller to draw the boundary around you and make it a custom shape. This is the option I suggest you use and I would suggest where possible to bring it in about one foot from the edge of your room and this will help you stop punching walls or smashing your TV. So this is your main home menu space and this is where you come back to when you quit a game and also where you can buy games and apps from and make changes in the settings. In the quick settings menu you can also have quick access to changing your play space boundary as well as adjusting your IPD settings. You can also cast from here as well so others can watch your gameplay. This isn't available on mobile yet, but you can cast to a smart TV or to a computer. You can move the screen around by pressing the trigger and pointing at the line at the bottom of the menu and then moving it where you want to move it. To access the settings menu, you can select library and then settings, or you can select quick settings and then the hexagonal settings icon here. If you go down to lab in the menu, you can select see-through mode. And this allows you to double tap the side of your headset and then you'll be able to see your room around you in color using the camera at the front of your headset. And this is great to see people around you or figure out where you are in the room so you can reset your position. To buy games, you need to add a payment method and this can easily be done on your phone by downloading the VR Assistant for Pico. You can then browse for games and buy through the app or in the headset by selecting store here and then selecting the game that you want. What's great about buying games with the Pico 4 is that they have a very similar refund policy to the Quest 2. If you've had a game for less than 14 days and have played it less than two hours, they will give you a refund. This is really great if you've played a game and you suffer with motion sickness or if you don't like it for any other reason. To find the games that you've bought, select libraries and then entertainment. And if you select apps here, this is where you'll find the pre-installed apps such as YouTube, Disney, Prime Video, Twitch, etc. On your right controller, you have the joystick and an A and B button. And in most games, you'll get told how to use these. You also have the home button here. And with this button, you can bring up the menu when you're in your home environment and you can also make it disappear. And you can also use this button to recenter your screen by pressing pressing and holding the button down. So if you want to change the direction you're standing, this puts the menu or the game you're playing back in front of you by re-centering it. The button next to this is the screenshot and screen record button. Press it once to take a photo and press and hold to record a video. When a video is recording, you'll see a record icon in the top right of your headset. And you can view your screen recordings and your screenshots by selecting file manager and then videos or images. If you have any connection issues with your headset or your headset freezes, you can press and hold the power button for 10 seconds and this will reboot your headset. And if the controllers stop responding, you can restart them by removing and reinserting the battery cartridge. For more useful VR videos, please hit subscribe and share your tips in the comments below. My name's Rich, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.